Hello, welcome to today's class. We're going to continue with capital allowances. In our previous class, we looked at wear and tear. We introduced wear and tear, the different concepts in wear and tear. And for this lesson, we're going to look at an illustration on the wear, uh, on the wear and tear. Now, some points to note, we had said wear and tear, for wear and tear purposes, we're going to put machinery in poles. And we agreed there are four poles according to the act. And for each of the pool, you're going to grant wear and tear at a specific percentage that is provided for in the act. And additionally, uh, you're going to account for it based on the net book value, which you call the written down value. So you take what you had at the beginning of the year, add what you have purchased during the year, less what you have disposed during the year. Uh, then it's worth to note that wear and tear, for wear and tear purposes, you're going to prorate wear and tear, or you're going to, to have wear and tear proportionate to the period that the business existed. That means if the business has been existing for the whole year, let's say for the whole of 2017, the business was existing because it was a going concern started maybe in the year 2000 or whatever other year, and you purchased a uh, qualifying machinery in the month of August, you're going to claim for wear and tear as if that machinery was there throughout that whole year. So you will only prorate wear and tear when the business is starting and it started in the middle of the year. So that is worth noting. Uh, so let's, we're going to look at uh, an illustration. I'm going to read through the illustration, then we discuss the illustration, and then using the, um, the format that we had at the beginning in the other lesson, we're going to fix the values there, and then we'll co compute the wear and tear. So the question reads, X Limited reported the following information for the year ending 2017 or for the year of income 2017. Written down value uh, brought down class 1, 2 million, class 2, 800,000, class 3, 3.2 million, class 4, 1.5 million. The following assets were acquired during the year 2017. Billboard, 40,000, weighing scale, 200,000, wheelbarrows, 100,000, mobile forklift, 1.6 million, two saloon cars each, costing 3.2 million, that's a total of 6.4 million. Computers, 480,000. Computer software, 60,000. Photocopier, 200,000. Tractor, 2 million. Tractor trailer, 250,000. Electronic calculator, 80,000. Then you're told one of the saloon cars was involved in an accident and written off. The insurer compensated X Limited, 1.3 million for the loss. The weighing scale, the weighing machine had been acquired on higher purchase. The cash price was 150,000 required. We enter schedule for 2017. So we go through it again and then we look at the different classes. So you remember class one, heavy earth moving, heavy self propelling machinery, class two, office machinery, class three, light self-propelled machinery, class four, other non-self-propelled machinery other than a ship. So we're going to put those three classes, we're going to put uh, our assets, our qualifying assets here in the three classes. So it start written down value, brought down, we will bring it down in the respective classes. Then uh, billboard, we had said earlier that billboard is used in marketing, and once we fix a billboard, it is, uh, it's normally there, unlike an advert that will run for a day or for a week. So for that reason, we take it to class four reason. It is non-self-propelling. Then weighing scale, again, non-self-propelling, so 200,000. But we have a note. Uh, concerning the weighing scale, you told the weighing scale or the weighing machine had been acquired on higher purchase. The cash price was 150,000 shillings. Now, um, we had earlier said that when an asset is acquired on higher purchase terms, you can be able to split the 
cost of the asset. So like in this weighing machine, you told the, the cash price is 150,000. So we can split that. The cost of the weighing machine is 200,000. This 200,000 is split into the cash price which is 150,000 and then there is the higher purchase interest of 50,000. So when you add the two, 150 plus 50 gives you 200,000. So for tax purposes, we are interested in that. So this is our qualifying cost for addition. Weighing scale is uh, non-self propelling, so it goes to plus four. The higher purchase interest is an allowable deduction. So we proceed. Um, that was weighing scale. Wheelbarrows, non-self propelling. So we take that to class four. Mobile forklift. It is mobile, so it is self propelling. So it goes to class one. Two saloon cars at three point two million each. Now we had said for non-commercial vehicles in class three, like saloon cars, the cost for addition shall be restricted to. 2 million. So, though each of these saloon car is costing 3.2 million, the cost for addition shall be 2 million uh, per vehicle. So, it's 2 million times 2 vehicles, that is 4 million. Computers, that is an office machinery that goes to class 2. Computer software is, uh, as we know, software is what we'll need to install in the computer for it to be functional and for it to serve our purposes. Uh, software is classified differently. So for software, we're going to grant that at 20% on a straight line basis. Now, because it is straight line, it cannot fit in the normal wear and tear schedule that we will have. Because we had said earlier, the wear and tear schedule is based on a reducing balance basis. And you remember in mathematics, you only put two figures together if they have a common denominator. So since the wear and tear schedule is written, is, uh, reducing balance basis, and the computer software is a straight line basis. We cannot put that, those two together. So we're going to put computer software separately. Uh, we will see how we shall treat that. At 20%, so we are assuming that the cost of computer software is to be written off over a period of five years, which is 100 divided by 20. Then photocopier, that is an office machinery going to class two. Tractor at two million. That is uh, class one because it is heavy self-propelling. Uh, tractor trailer. Now, where you have tractors and tractor trailers or where you have trucks and the truck head can be separated from the trailer, you, the head is going to qualify for class one or in this case, our tractor will qualify for class one because it is heavy and it is self propelling but the tractor trailer which is non-self propelling goes to class four because in class four that is where we have the non-self propelling that also will apply to a truck which is if it if you can be able to separate the engine head and the trailer the engine head will be uh, will be qualifying for class one because it can pull off load that is more than three tons and then the tra the trailer is going to qualify for class four because it is non-self propelling it must be pulled uh, then electronic calculator at 80,000 that is going to be an office equipment then the other note that we had one of the saloon cars was involved in an accident and written off the insurer compensated x limited 1.3 million for the loss you're going to have uh, working for that now we had said earlier when assets are lost through maybe fire, theft, or accident, and the insurance company compensates the firm, we're going to deem the compensation received from the insurance as if it was their disposal proceeds. So that is what you're going to do here. But remember, the cost or the purchase price of the saloon car was 3.2 million we had bought two at 6.4 million 
Now, cost for addition was restricted to, to 2 million because it is non-commercial in class 3. So you're saying, therefore, we must restrict the disposal proceeds. You're going to use a formula. And the formula is disposal proceeds divided by original cost, or in this case, purchase price, Multiply by the restriction factor, which is 2 million. So we shall have our disposal proceeds, uh, which we are taking to be the deemed, which the insurance, you told uh, the insurer compensated 1.3 for the loss. So disposal proceeds, 1.3. Purchase price, 3.2. Restriction factor. 2 million. So that gives us 1.3 divided by 3.2. 1.3 divided by 3.2 times 2 million. 8.12500. So this is the disposal value for that vehicle. So we have discussed that question. So what is remaining is we are going to have the schedule and then we fix them. So this is our topic is capital allowances. Our subtopic is where entire allowance, and we're looking at an illustration. So he said divide into the four classes, class four, class three. Class two, class one. So we label the classes, class one, class two, class three, and class four. The rates, 37.5. Remember, it is reducing balance basis, 30, 25, and 12.5% of the qualifying cost. We're dealing in shillings, so our currency. This is the year 2017, very important because sometimes the rates keep on changing. So we have return down value, brought down, plus one, two million, two eight hundred thousand. So two million, eight hundred thousand plus 3, 3.2 and 1.5. 3.2 and 1.5. Remember we said that is the written down value or that is the, the residue that we are yet to claim for. So in 2017, we have additions. So we just put our additions together. We have billboard of 40,000. Billboard, we said, is class 4, 40. We have weighing scale. From our computation, weighing scale, we are considering the cash price, which is 150,000. Then we have wheelbarrows at 100,000. Now, 
non-self propelling class 4 100,000 then there is mobile forklift at 1.6 class 1 self propelling heavy then there is uh, saloon cars 2 saloon cars non commercial restrict to 2 million 2 times 2 4 million then we have computers at 480,000 Class 2 office machinery. Then we have um, computer software, no photocopier 200,000. Office machinery 200,000. Then we have tractor 2 million. Tractor heavy self propelling. 2 million tractor trailer to 50,000 tractor trailer non self propelling 250,000 we will need to use this figure so even as we rub we need to put it somewhere so let's have it there so that you can use this space Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners. Visit our shop along Tomboya Street, Pioneer House, 3rd floor, opposite fire station.